Chapter 4, In a Pickle. Did you ever taste a pickle before? If not, you really should try one out. They're good. Now, the point I am trying to say is taste it. And tell me what you think of it. Is it sweet? Is it sour? Or is it sweet and sour? It's sour. But why do people still like them? I don't know. Why do you like them? Well... I don't know why you do like it. I don't know. What about you? Well, um, what about you? Or you? You. You. How dare you? Well, how dare you? How could you eat? You ate my pickle. Mommy! And the 37-year-old ran all the way home. Oh, a touching story, don't you think? Oh, come on. Over a pickle? I hope it had gold in it. Wait, I hope not, now that I think about it. Well, here's the thing. A pickle is sour, and so are some people. Not physically, don't eat a person, but on the inside of the person's heart, they are sour. Bitter, hard, and bare. And two people fighting is the Holy Spirit and Satan. And Satan is going to lose, and he's going to cry all the way home in hell, where he belongs forever. Because like my dad, Pastor Milton, says, Jesus wins and Satan loses. Jesus already defeated death and Satan. But what I think Jesus is going to do is, he is going to defeat Satan again. Because it is it will be a reminder that Jesus is number one, and Satan has and is nothing. What? Are you calling me a pickle? Okay, that's the last time I'm reading this book. You're the pickle, not me. I'm not even close to being a pickle. Pickle. I'm not even a cucumber, so I can't be a pickle. Well, what do you call what you're doing there right now? Do you like stories as well? I do as well. I as well as I do. Let me tell you one right now. It's about a skunk pickle family. Around September 17, 2013, that may not be the right day, but to get the picture, I was minding my own business, playing basketball, when two brothers came into play. They asked me if I wanted to play with them, and being the nice guy I am, I said yes. So we were playing basketball, and I said I had to go home, and they started calling me a whole bunch of names. They said I was gay. Uh, faggot, feminine, all because of the way I played basketball. I told them to shut up, or I would tell my parents. They kept on right on going, calling me names, and I wanted to punch them so bad. I mean, I could have knocked out Muhammad Ali, the boxer, but I didn't, which I can regret a little. Anyway, I told my mom, and we went to the, tell the mother, and she slammed the door in our faces. Anyway, to make a long story short, I told my dad, we went over and talked again, and the mother did the same thing, slammed it in our faces, and the mom and my dad, my mom and my dad were in the basement arguing about it, and the mother, the stepfather, uh, they came, the two boys and the sister rang our doorbell. Me and Laura didn't answer it because uh, by that time, my mom uh, came down from upstairs and said, don't answer it because by this time, my dad was in the shower getting ready for church because uh, it was Wednesday. So after all this happened on a Wednesday, um, and after just as we were leaving for church, we stopped by their house, and they were outside talking, and it turns out they go to the same church that we went to. They sure didn't act like it. They were swearing and everything. Anyway, to the mother, I, the mother said at this point, at the end of the argument, that she told me not to touch a girl that I had a crush on at the time. And then I pulled a bra string off. I mean, come on. I said, I said to her half of my mind, my mind, ma'am, I never saw you in my life. And I didn't. She said, yes, you did at the pool. I wanted to say, no, I would have remembered that day, but I bit my tongue, uh, literally, and it hurt. Um, I said, I never did such a thing. Go ahead and ask the two girls next door to you right now. They were right there. She didn't want to, and my dad asked me, 
on the side if I did this, and I said no. He believed me. And I wanted to go up to that lady and say all of my mind, but I didn't. I would probably have sinned, so I didn't. Boy, talk about holding a grudge. You would have had to call 911 because there was about to be a murder, but okay, okay, I'm, I'm joking. That's a bad joke. Anyway, later my dad had taken me to the river and told me to forgive her and the family. Um, I took a deep breath in my mind and heart, and I forgave them. The hardest thing I ever did in my whole life so far. But the Bible says this in Matthew 5, 43 to 44. You have heard it. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who will persecute you. Oh, now that is hard. To love our enemies, it would be easier to kiss a skunk and still smell fine. But God didn't say it would be easy. But he also never said that it would be too hard. Now, wouldn't it be easier to hate someone? Yes. But then you would be eaten up inside your heart and soul. But God doesn't want that. So he wants you to love. And when things don't make any sense, it's because it shouldn't make sense. Isaiah 55, 8 to 9 says this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So when things don't make any sense down here, it always makes sense up there. Make sense? All right, one more thing. The Bible says in Matthew 18, 20, for where two or three come together in my name, there I am with you. So Jesus will always be with us and fill and refill us with the Holy Spirit. All we have to do is ask. And if two or three people are coming in unity for Christ, he will be with us. Anyways, that reminds me of a song called He Is With Us. He is with us, he is with us, always, always. He is with us, he is with us, always, always. Jesus is always with us wherever we go, in our hearts, mind, and soul. Jesus rocks.